All right, here we are on uh, Lesson 2, LR4, or excuse me, RT4. This is Chapter 16 on uh, calculating sides and angles in non-right triangles. So yesterday with the Law of Sines, Law of Sines, we had these two formulas. What do the capital letters stand for? Yeah, angles, what do the lowercase letters stand for? Sides. Very good. Okay, and then we also have this area formula, one half A B sine of capital C. Okay, that allows us to find the area. If I have an angle C and I have two sides A and B, I can find the area of that triangle, even if it's not a right triangle. Right? So yesterday we, we found a couple of formulas that help us to find sides and area. Today I'm going to introduce you to two more formulas that allow you to find a side and an angle. So this formula right here <clears throat> is going to allow you to find a side. And this is how it goes. That's called the law of cosines. Why do you think it's called the law of cosines? Because it's got a cosine in it. Okay, so that allows you to find a side. Which side, A, B, or C? Correct. So what do we have to know then? Well, we have to know side A, side B, and angle C. In order to find, okay, so in order to find the side C, right, this is what we're seeking. If this is angle C, let's say I know the measure of this angle is, I don't know, 42 degrees. And I know A and B are 21 and 32 I would be seeking, right? I would be seeking to find this side C. That's what I'm looking for right there. Okay, so again, if I have side angle side and I want to find that opposite side, I'm going to use this formula law of cosines. Okay, that's to find a side length. Here is the law of cosines to find an angle. So uh, Wyatt said, uh, well, are you ever going to have to take the inverse? Yes, you will. Okay, imagine taking all of these items right here and stripping them away so I have C all alone. Capital C now, the angle. Well, I'm not going to go through the algebra on it, but basically what you're going to do is the inverse cosine of A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. And that's how we're going to find that angle across. Okay, so now, now what is the unknown what are we seeking? The angle C. So what do we have to know? A, B, and C. So I have to know all three sides here in order to find an angle. And up here I said I need to know side, angle, side in order to find that opposite side. Okay. I'm going to go through this proof in a moment here. Okay, so here's the law of cosines proof. Okay, the individual that discovered this, right, here's angle B up here. They said that this side down here is B. So if they named this portion X, then this portion would have to be B minus X. They just split it up with a height right there. Okay. Uh, what side would this be over here? A, and what side would this be? C, right? Okay. So now I'm going to take that big triangle and I'm going to split it in half. Both of these are right triangles. So what would the cosine of C equal? Right? Here's the angle. Adjacent over hypotenuse would be what? X over A. Right? So what would X equal? Right? If I cross multiplied what's above here, X would equal A times the cosine of C. you agree? OK. So if, I'm going to transition, I'll get back to that piece in a moment. If x squared plus h squared, right, if I use Pythagorean's theorem right here, x squared plus h squared equals a squared, then what would h squared equal? What would I do with this x squared? Bring it over. Okay, okay so far? 
I'm going to use these now, thank you, to determine this formula. Okay, so now I'm going to do a direct substitution. So in the triangle on the right side, would you agree that Pythagorean theorem would say b minus x squared plus h squared would equal c squared? Pythagorean theorem. That's all it is. So now I'm going to do a substitution. Where I see h squared, what am I going to plug in? a squared minus x squared. In for b minus x squared, what can I plug in there? What do I know about x? What do I know about x? Well, x equals a cosine of c, right? So in a moment, I'm going to use that, but first I'm going to do this. What would this require me to do? b minus x times b minus x. It would require me to use a four-lettered F word called FOIL. Right? So first times first, that's going to be b squared. Then I'll get negative 2b plus what? x squared. Foil. First, outside, inside, last. Right? So I foiled that. Now what's going to conveniently happen here? What do you notice about negative x squared and positive x squared? They go, they go away. Okay? They go away. Uh-oh. We did something wrong. Yep, we did something wrong. Hold on. The proof, the proof failed for a moment. This is going to be... Sorry. I missed a piece. This is going to be b minus yep, a cosine of c. Pause for a second. Okay, so I missed a small piece. I forgot the x on the middle term. Okay, so what we know is that this x squared and this x squared, they're going to go away, correct? So see you later. c squared then will be a squared plus this b squared minus... 2 times b times x. And what was x from the original piece in blue up in the top left? It was a cosine of c. And there, what we do is, because we like letters in alphabetical order, we just rewrite this. a squared plus b squared. I'm going to rearrange the a and the b here and go 2ab cosine of c. And what that allows us to do then, folks, is to find the side across from that angle C. Again, right here, if I have A and I have B, those sides, and I have angle C, that means I can find the side across. Now, why is that useful? Because I can't use the law of sines in that case. So the law of cosines is necessary. And there's your proof for the law of cosines. So let's jump into a couple of examples that will use that. Okay, here's just a nice breakdown of that using the Pythagorean theorem. It gives a description, and there's our formula. So you can watch another proof online if you'd like, but let's use it. So reminder that this applies with side angle side. There's another formula that we have that applies with side angle side, and it's the area. Okay. That one there, but we're not trying to find the area here. We're trying to find that missing side. So let's identify some values here. What would A and B equal? Sides or angles? Sides, right? So could I do this? Or does it have to be the other way? Or does it not matter? Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. What would this be? That'd be angle C. So let's do a direct substitution into our new formula. And now this is where not screwing it up in your calculator is huge. Okay, so a squared, that's 52 squared, plus b squared, which is 45 squared, minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of the angle in between. 
36. Okay, if you don't have a graphing calculator, uh, I would do each of these individual pieces separately. If you do have a graphing calculator, I'd type it in from left to right. Okay, let's first find out what c squared equals. I'll take a break here. Let's come back and find our answer. Uh, when you're ready, you can go ahead and look up here, see what you get. If you get what I get, I get about that. Right, but that's not the length of that side, right? Not possible for sides to be 45, 52, and 942. What have I forgotten? Mm -hmm. Yep, square root that. Uh, looks like I get about 30.7. And that makes sense within that triangle, right? That, that side would fit. That's how you use the law of cosines to find a side length. Well, let's see how you did on this one. Uh, finding X. What do we want to call X? What letter? A, B, or C? C. Let's call it C. Uh, I don't know what you did, but I'm going to call this A. I'm going to call this B. I'm going to call this angle C. So I'm going to do a direct substitution. Yes, sir. All right, so here I go. I'm going to put these in. So C squared will equal 235 squared plus 282 squared minus 2 times 235 times 282 times the cosine of the angle in between them. Uh, just in case you're wondering, I'm probably expecting, I don't know, let's see. I'm expecting my largest side to be C, just from experience. If this is an 82 degree angle, that means both of these are going to be smaller than 82 degrees, right? Because an equilateral triangle would be 60, 60, 60. Just if you're curious. Okay, I'm going to type those into my calculator. My calculator is handy dandy. I can do that. Some of you have an older scientific calculator. You got to take it piece by piece. I wanted parentheses there. 2 times 235 times 282 times the cosine of 82 degrees. So let me check my math there. 235 squared, 282 squared, minus the quantity 2 times 235 times 282 times the cosine of 82. And I get a large number. I get like 116,302. Somebody else confirm out there? 0.99. I'm going to take the square root of that. And I get 341-ish. I get 341. Okay, check your calculations. If you didn't get that, let's talk about it. Okay, so now on this problem, we're going to find the angle Q. What do I want to name angle Q, A, B, or C? C, C right, because I'm going to try to find angle C. Remember, the formula for angle C is the inverse cosine of A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. These formulas are given on the test. Yeah, you don't have to remember them. So this angle is going to be the inverse cosine of, okay, A squared and B squared. What would A and B have to equal? 175 and 250. Doesn't matter which one's which. I'll go A here. I'll go B here. That makes this side C. So we would go 175 squared minus 250 squared, excuse me, plus 250 squared, minus 225 squared over 2 times A, which is 175, times B, which is 250. Okay, now this is where you have to be extremely careful. If you're doing this in a graphing calculator, I would do this. Make sure you do this. Parentheses around this, right there. Okay, make sure you put parentheses nested inside so into your calculator, this is what it should look like. Uh, let me see here. From left to right, your calculator should look like this. This is graphing calculator. If you don't have a graphing calculator, I'll talk you through how I want you to do it.
Boom. That'll get you angle C. Okay. If you're working with a scientific calculator, I would do this. If you have a scientific calculator, your breakdown should be the following. You should calculate this first. Calculate the top piece right here. And when I do 175 squared plus 250 squared minus 225 squared, I get 4, 42,500. Get that number. Is it minus 225? Correct. Squared? Or? Two, yeah, all of those are squared. Correct. And then on the bottom, it's 2 times 175 times 250. So I would get 87,500. Okay. So if you have a scientific calculator, calculate the numerator first. Put that number in here. Calculate the denominator second, put that in here, and then you should just do a direct calculation right there. If you're an individual that has a scientific calculator, or excuse me, a graphing calculator, and you like that method better, then do it. You can, you are just, you have the ability to, the luxury to do it this way here if you have a graphing calculator. Let's see what we get. Inverse cosine, 42,500 divided by 87,500. Uh, I'm getting 60.9 degrees. 60.9 degrees. Yeah. Um, one thing I forgot to tell folks is make sure you got parentheses around the bottom as well so that you don't get an error. Um, well, let's see if you get the correct answer using that method. Uh, let's jump into another example. I'm trying to find angle T. I'm going to call that angle C, so that makes this side C, so that makes this side A, that makes this side B, or B and A, doesn't matter. So angle C will be the inverse cosine of A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2 times A times B. Okay, so I'm going to do a calculation here as if I had a scientific calculator. Okay, I'm going to take 41 squared plus 25 squared minus 36 squared, and I get uh, 1,010. And then I take 2 times 41 times 25, I get 2,050. Okay, this might be the easier method. I don't know. It's up to you. And I'm going to take the inverse cosine of the ratio given there. Looks like I get, uh, anybody else get 60.5? I get 60.5 degrees. I rounded 4.8 up to 0.5, yeah. Okay. That might be the easier of the two methods. It's totally up to you. If you can remember to calculate numerator and denominator separately, and then just plug them in like that. Looks a little bit more familiar to us. Yeah? You good? So I'm going to just talk through the scenarios of when we're going to use each of these formulas. Okay, law of cosines we just learned today. We're going to use law of cosines when given either all three sides. All right, if we're given all three sides, we're going to use this formula. Because if we have all three sides, we wouldn't need to find a side. We'd be looking for an angle. Right? Or if we're given two sides with an angle in between, right? This would be side angle side, where we'd be looking for the side opposite that angle. Right? Okay, so those are your two scenarios for law of cosines. For law of sines, we use when we're given a side and its corresponding angle. What that means is if you're given an angle and the side across from it, you're going to want to use law of sines. Okay. In neither of these scenarios, side, 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 or side, angle, side, are we given an angle and the side across from it. So anytime you see a side, angle pair, that's going to be law of sines. Anytime you see side, 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 or side, angle, side, that's law of cosines. You can like, subscribe, comment. Uh, 100th sub will get $13 to GNC, which might get you a water and maybe... You know, like 
sample. Yeah, a sample of uh, some bar you know, that you can, you know, get some gains from. Enjoy your weekend. If this is 2019 and this lesson is done on a Thursday, then enjoy your weekend the day after tomorrow. Looking forward to Monday. More work. <laughs>